explain it in simple terms. It's really quite complex. Is it there's something about it on page 35? Oh, hello, Dad. Didn't see you. <laughs> if I were to say bubblegum, would that mean anything to you? No. Pink bubblegum. No. It was on the drive. Oh. I put my foot in it. <laughs> Nasty. It could have been. I was putting the car away at the time. My foot stuck to the accelerator pedal. I need to go the back of the garage. Could have been an accident. It was you, wasn't it? What makes you think it was me? Oh, well, we never had pink bubblegum on the drive before you came. That doesn't mean it was me. Well, you're not suggesting Mrs. Thompson started chewing it, are you? I've no idea. Now, if you don't mind, I'm trying to study. This happens to be the most critical period of my life. I need peace and quiet. And what are you studying? History. Oh, I was good at history. Perhaps something else. Uh, no, it's all changed since your day. <laughs> How could it have changed? History's history. No, it's all different. <laughs> what theory are you doing? The uh, Napoleonic Wars. <laughs> Do we still win? Yeah. Well, that's good. <laughs> you want the date of the Battle of Trafalgar? Why? I want you to tell me. Don't you know? I know. <laughs> the question is, do you? Um, Trafalgar. Come on, you must have heard of Trafalgar, the famous sea battle where Lord Nelson was killed. I know. He died in Hardy's arms. His last words were kismet, Hardy, which means fate. Or kiss me, Hardy, which means something entirely different. <laughs> no one's ever been quite sure. Yeah, at least they were sure of the date, which is more than you are. It was 1805. Correct. Ask me another. <laughs> right. <laughs> Who was Chuck Berry? Chuck Berry? <laughs> now then, was he one of Napoleon's trusted aides? Did he serve on Wellington's staff? Or does he play the electric guitar? <laughs> Wonder how that got there. You were reading it. Do you really think you're going to get your A-levels? Well, it's not going to be easy. They don't give them away, but let's just say I'm quietly confident. Well, it's more than your teachers are. How do you know? I phoned your school today. Ah, well, yes, before you say any more, just remember that one or two of them don't like me that say anything. Oh? oh. <laughs> Who doesn't like you? The headmaster, for a start. Anyone else? The head of upper school. I see. And the history teacher. History. <laughs> and English. Is that all? Possibly geography. <laughs> But apart from that, you're fairly popular. I suppose so, yeah. You're living in a dream world, and I need a drink. Do you know what they said? They said you haven't spoken once in class this year, except for us to go to the toilet. <laughs> that tonsillitis. No, you haven't. Headmaster said you hadn't made a single contribution to school life, either in work or sport. Well, you can't with raging tonsillitis. <laughs> he said your lack of concern for the future had given him the impression that you were in receipt of a private income. Well, if that means me, you're going to be disappointed. So he, uh, he doesn't think I'm going to get my A-levels? A-levels? He thinks the only way to get you out of that sixth form is to burn it down. <laughs> he said, if I'd seen your last report, which, incidentally, I appear to have signed for, thus adding forgery to your other accomplishments, I'd have known all this. All right, I've had a bad year, but I have had tonsillitis. No, you haven't had tonsillitis. That's right. Call me a liar. How do you know I haven't had tonsillitis? Because you haven't got any tonsils. <laughs> haven't I? No, you had a mark when you were three. I didn't know that. Why didn't someone tell me? Well, does it matter? Of course it matters. Taking someone's tonsils out and not even telling them. You know what this means? What? Glandular fever brought on by overwork. <laughs> I think the best thing I can do is study quietly at home. That master thinks you're wasting your time. You should look for a job. A job? <laughs> You've gone pale. <laughs> oh, come on, you must have thought about it. What would you like to do? What, what interests you? Well, um... I like writing poetry. <laughs> poetry? Well, that's a relief. I thought it might be something impractical. <laughs> of course, the country's crying out for poets. Can't get enough of them. <laughs> We're going to hold our own with the Japanese. We've got to turn out more poets. <laughs> Who knows, you could become Poet Laureate. That's worth 70 quid a year. I'm not interested in that sort of stuff. I'll be a rock poet and write lyrics for the big groups. I could become rich. Good, then I can retire and you can buy me a bungalow. You can laugh, but I've got talent. Who says? Adrian, for one. Who's Adrian? Someone I've met. Came to the house and I showed him my work. He was very impressed. And he's incredibly clever. He's got three A-levels. I don't care how many A-levels he's got. I warned you about inviting people to the house. I didn't invite him. And what was he doing here? Emptying the dustbins. <laughs> Emptying the dustbins? If he's so incredibly clever, what's he doing working on the dust cart? It's nothing to be ashamed of. The driver's got a degree in political philosophy. <laughs> what? 
Yes, Amy? Mr Willows, do you mind if I have a word? Oh, certainly. Alone. Oh. Uh, perhaps you'd get some food, Matthew. I've eaten. I meant for me. <laughs> oh, right. Um, would you like uh, cheese on toast, covered in beans, and topped with a fried egg? No. I'll butter some bread. <laughs> yes, Enid? I just wonder how much more I can stand. Oh, well, if the work's too much with the two of us, It's I... not the work. I've just found something obscene under Matthew's bed. It wasn't bubblegum, was it? No. <laughs> it was a book. What sort of book? A book with pictures of men and women. Yes. I'm sorry, something seems to have happened to my throat. <laughs> men and women in positions of intimacy. May I see? No, don't open it. <laughs> if we were to look at those pictures together, our relationship could never be the same again. You mean it doesn't leave much to the imagination? I've never imagined things like that. <laughs> if they're not physically impossible, they certainly lead to permanent injury. <laughs> I was shocked, Mr Willows. In fact, I lost the power of speech for several seconds, and I think I may have burnt out the hoover. <laughs> mm. Actually, it, it just looks like a sex manual to me, isn't it? No. Manuals of the Ford populace, Mr. Williams. <laughs> that is not a manual. That is filth. Right, well, uh, you get off now, Enid, and I'll have a word with him. I wish you would. He's running wild. He should be at school, not sitting around smoking, playing records with his friend from the dust cart. Well, don't worry, he won't be coming here again. Mr Willows, what that boy needs is a proper family life. He needs a woman around the house. <laughs> you could be right, but after seeing this, I wouldn't give much for her chances. <laughs> What's the matter with E.T.? She just had a severe shock. <laughs> she found something obscene under the bed. Which one, yours or mine? Yours! <laughs> Don't think I want to read that sort of stuff. I mean, you know it all. You know what I mean. It's disgusting. No, it isn't. Sex isn't disgusting. Well, why'd you hide it under the bed? Because I knew you wouldn't understand. I happen to be preparing myself for a fuller life. <laughs> One day I hope to meet a girl with whom I can enjoy a deep and satisfying relationship. Well, make sure she reads this book first. She might die of fright. I hope she'll be enlightened. Enlightened? She'll need to be a flaming acrobat. <laughs> well, where did it come from? Adrian gave it to me. I should have known. Now listen, Toad. I don't want to hear the name Adrian again, and I don't want him coming to the house. I think the sooner you get back to school, the better. Well, uh, I suppose I could try the college. You're not going there, full of glue sniffers. <laughs> I understand they're very good with emotional problems. You haven't got any emotional problems. Of course I've got emotional problems. I come from a broken home and my mother doesn't love me. Well, she doesn't love me either, but I'm not emotional about it. <laughs> no, what you need is discipline. No, I, I think I'd respond to a more relaxed atmosphere. If you get any more relaxed, you'll fall asleep. <laughs> well, you're not going to that college. A-levels are rarer than gold dust down there. Someone gets an O-level there for half-day holiday. There's more to education than academic achievement. There is such a thing as becoming a complete human being. Don't you want that? I'll settle for A-levels. I don't expect you to become a human being. I'll see if I can get into my old school. Your old school? Yes, yes. At least they still believe in discipline and hard work. I can't go there. Why not? I'd have to wear a uniform. So what? I'd look like a schoolboy. Well, you are a schoolboy. I'm old enough to die for my country. Want to join the army? No. Then shut up. <laughs> There's something else. It's not co-ed. So? Well, that means there aren't any girls. I know what co-ed means. Yeah, but I think it's important to have daily contact with the opposite sex. Do you want me to leave school stammering, blushing and tongue-tied in the presence of a woman? I'd prefer it to you jumping on it with this book in your hand. <laughs> I don't want to become one of those grammar school twits. One of those little know-alls. Well, how can you be a know-all? You don't know anything. <laughs> well, all that's going to change. But the college turns out a more rounded person. Oh, now we're back to women again. <laughs> Can we talk about this? We've talked about it. Now, I suggest you get back to your studies. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Is that all the bread? Yeah. Look, I am the breadwinner around here. Surely I'm entitled to more than one slice. Who's eating it all? I can't tell you. <laughs> Why not? I'm not supposed to mention his name. <laughs> get out! <laughs> <laughs> I can borrow it if 
if you like. Having a look round. You've certainly taken your time about it. I said two o'clock. I've taken an hour off work for this. I thought I'd suss the place out first. Suss it out? <laughs> Listen, I've got news for you. You're the one who's going to be sussed out. Where is he? Well, he's busy. He asked us to wait here. Oh, if he's too busy to see me. Oh, wait a minute. <laughs> oh, no, be fair to him. He hasn't met you yet. Doesn't know what he's missing. Don't know if I want to come here. Have you seen that boy waiting in the corridor? No. Yeah. He's crying. Is he? So what? He's gonna get the cane. Uh. Oh, yes, that's something you forgot to mention, corporal punishment. <laughs> you still believe in it here? Well, I still believe in it. How would you feel if they cane me? I'd try and bear it with fortitude, my friend. <laughs> well, I wouldn't. It's degrading. Come on, you must have had the cane before. No. We had the slipper. <laughs> slipper? <laughs> that's for girls and sissies. You should have been here in the days of old Crippler. Knocker Brown and Thrasher Harris. Crippler, Knocker and Thrasher Harris? <laughs> Imagine what they were like, those sort of nicknames. They're not still here, are they? Only Thrasher. What's he teach? Nothing, he's the headmaster. <laughs> I wonder if he remembers me. I certainly haven't forgotten him. You mean he made a deep impression? Yeah, he came on suspicion. Suspicion? Yeah, that way he was sure of getting the guilty party. But that's unjust. Of course he's unjust. Life's unjust and he prepared you for life. You leave school expecting justice, you're going to be bitterly disappointed. But a man's innocent until proved guilty. Not according to Thrasher. <laughs> well, he thought it was better if ten innocent boys were punished than one guilty one went free. It's barbaric. Oh, don't worry. He's probably mellowed a lot since then. I hope so. Oh, I don't give much for his chances. Not in this place. This place happens to be a good school. And it wasn't all work. <laughs> we had some good times. Shorty, short, and I... Shorty short. Short by name and short by nature. We were known as the long and the short of it. We were inseparable. He used to start the fights and I used to finish them. <laughs> said it was a jungle. Well, what if it was? It's a jungle out there. It's a harsh world. It's not all free expression and visits to art galleries. What's this? Put that down. This is it, the cane. Banned by the European courts and in full view. He probably doesn't use it anymore. Then what's he got it for? He can't use it for walking, he'd have to be a dwarf. <laughs> it's a deterrent. I bet he uses it, the old sadist. Put that down! <laughs> ah, my name's Harris, headmaster. Sorry to have kept you waiting. <laughs> Please sit down. So, this is Matthew. Yes. And I make it a rule never to go by first impressions, but the boots would have to go, and the hair. The hair? Too long. Also, he'd be expected to wear a uniform. He's looking forward to it, Headmaster. Gives him a sense of discipline. <laughs> exactly. Discipline in this school is exceptional. Have you any objection to corporal punishment? None whatsoever. Well, I... <laughs> I came for swearing, smoking, spitting, horseplay, slack work, bullying, and slovenliness. Apart from that, we're a fairly liberal regime. <laughs> of course, Matthew, as a sixth former, would have a choice. He could be expelled. I think Matthew will be prepared to take his punishment. We'd also expect the hours homework every night. What? That is, of course, if we accept him. Uh, may I speak frankly? Oh, please do. <laughs> We have a brilliant sixth form this year. Probably the most brilliant in the history of the whole school, certainly in my memory. Good. Question is, would Matthew be able to keep up? I think he'd respond to the challenge. <laughs> Not according to his O-level results. He hardly distinguished himself. I had emotional problems. We think he may be a late developer. <laughs> well, I'm sure we're all counting on that, but the question is, how late? <laughs> I'm retiring this year. <laughs> I'd like to spoil the finest sixth form in the history of the school by introducing any disruptive influence. 
the bad apple that spoils the barrel. Have we his last report? No, we uh, seem to have mislaid it. I see. Oh, well, never mind. I did take the precaution of getting in touch with his old school. I'm afraid the boy does not come recommended. <laughs> Apparently he was lazy, inattentive, uncooperative, disruptive and cynical when he was there. <laughs> Most of the time he was absent. That was because of emotional problems. I beg your pardon? He had glandular fever. Brought on by emotional problems. <laughs> but does he read much? Avidly. What sort of books? <laughs> Mainly non-fiction. But he should be reading Hamlet for his A-levels. And Hamlet, of course. <laughs> what can you tell me about Hamlet? <laughs> he had emotional problems? <laughs> yes, but why? His father was replaced by another man. I know how it felt because it happened to me. And how did Hamlet revenge himself? He ran his stepfather through with a poisoned rapier. <laughs> I trust that's where the similarity ends. <laughs> yeah. I attacked mine with a garden rake. What? <laughs> I think I should explain that Matthew's mother and I are divorced. Ah. I'm a tug of love child. No, you're not. <laughs> well, I'm not doing any tugging, don't you worry. <laughs> he doesn't like me because I remind him of her. And what about your mother? Well, she doesn't like me because I remind her of him. I can't win. <laughs> That's why I feel rejected. Don't you like him? Would you? <laughs> no, I'm just doing my duty as a father. I didn't ask him to come back. I had to come back. He needed me. I didn't want him sitting alone on some park bench talking to the pigeons. I don't talk to pigeons. I had a peaceful, contented life until he came back. Now he blames me for everything. He hasn't got any emotional problems, just bone idle. I see. Uh, I mean... Bone idle. You wouldn't expect this school to take him. A school that derives its charter from Elizabeth I. But he needs discipline. He needs the advantages that this school could give him. I know, because it was the making of me. Oh? <laughs> you mean you are an old boy of this school? Yes. <laughs> Oh, well, of course, that makes all the difference. You probably won't remember me. Uh, you came in my last year. I thought the face was strangely familiar. What was the name again? Willows. Henry Willows. Willows. <laughs> <laughs> of course. You do remember me. How could I forget? <laughs> it's the same with me. They were the happiest days of my life. They may have been for you, Willows. <laughs> They certainly weren't for us. What? Your name was written in letters of blood across this school. You and that fiend in human form, that devil incarnate, Short. <laughs> Short? The most thoroughly evil boy I ever met. <laughs> what happened to him? He went into the church. <laughs> hey. And was it his idea or yours to make the more sheltered new boys read aloud from Hank Jansen and Mickey Spillane until they fainted? I don't remember, sir. Well, perhaps you remember attempting to shut the smaller first formers in their desks, although the space was clearly insufficient. <laughs> and when that failed to amuse, hanging them from their own coat hooks in the cloakrooms, the cloakrooms where you and Short reigned supreme. Uh, boys will be boys. I suppose it still happens. It does not still happen, Willows, because I stamped it out with this. <laughs> it must be 30 years since I've seen a first former hanging from his own coat hook. <laughs> hey, it was just high spirits, said Master. And was it high spirits when you electrocuted six boys in a science class? <laughs> By persuading them all to join hands and then attaching one of them to the light socket? <laughs> Short and I were demonstrating the flow of electricity, sir. Yes. I remember your saying so at the time. Still, all that's in the past, isn't it? I wouldn't dream of allowing it to prejudice my decision. I'm just surprised you chose to return under the circumstances. <laughs> Now, if you'll excuse me, I have a boy to see. Some misdemeanor in the rhododendrons. <laughs> Look at them. Beautiful at this time of year, aren't they? You'd think they'd show more respect. But, sir... I'll be in touch, Willows. 
<laughs> Will you stop grinning? I don't suppose you're cane him. Shouldn't think so. <laughs> well, I hope you're satisfied. I just had a call from the headmaster. He suggests that someone with your emotional problems might do better at the college. You mean he turned me down? Yes. He also wants to know if you've got his cane. <laughs> oh, I should have known you'd make a bad impression. What about you? What chance did I stand with your record? <laughs> you and Shorty, the Gestapo of the lower sixth. That has nothing to do with it. It was your scholastic record, your lack of achievement, the missing report. What have you got there? Nothing. Let me see. Oh, at last! The missing report. You had it all the time. Now, let me explain. No, no, let me read it. After all, I signed for it. <laughs> Let's see what you've been so modest about. Good Lord above. <laughs> this is worse than I imagined. No wonder you were being secretive about it. But this is deplorable. 17 out of 100 for maths. <laughs> People who count on their fingers do better than that. <laughs> and look at this. 20 out of 100 for history. You get that for getting the date right on the top of the paper. <laughs> and geography, 25 out of 100. That's an improvement. <laughs> improvement? 25 out of 100 for geography? I'm surprised you could find your way home. <laughs> Position in form, 30th. That's not so bad. Number in form, 30. <laughs> And the comment, makes no effort, lazy, wasting his time and ours. No wonder you hid it. If that was my report, I'd die of shame. It is yours. <laughs> Found it in some old papers in the bureau. You searched my desk? I wanted to compare your results with mine. Actually, mine were a bit better. <laughs> Don't worry, Dad. You're obviously a late developer. You come to my home, uninvited, and you ransack my personal effects. I won't stand for it! 